Hallelujah, hallelujah. I hope I get you guys back. But if not, then you can just um, do replay, okay? You can just do replay. Um, we're talking about escaping the blows of the enemy and moving inward away from the borders of the flesh. Moving inward away from the borders of the flesh. And when you move inward away from the borders of the flesh, then you cannot feel, bless you, bless you. You know, that's the devil. He don't want you guys to get this, okay? He don't want you to get it. But we ain't going to give him no credit because we're going to give it to you. In I'm going to give it to you anyway. So um, bless you, um, prophetess. Thank you for supporting. All right. Um, um, escaping the blows of the enemy. Remember I said the first thing you're going to do is that you're going to move away from the borders of the flesh. You're going to move away from the borders of the flesh and you're going to live upright before God. Look, all God wants is a pure heart. Many years ago when I first got saved, the Lord told me, he said, gay, all I want is a pure heart. I don't care if it's pure evil. If it's pure, I can clean the evil up. I can clean it up. So that means don't come in being a hypocrite. Be real. You might got a whole lot of issues, but God can clean you up. He can fix you because all of us are jacked up when we out there in the world. So when we come in, God can clean us up, but we got to come in real. And you know, the church teach us how to be hypocrites. They teach us how to act right, but we got to become right. And to become right is to become what God has designated for us to be. And so you can't, you can't do that if you're pretending. So you don't want to live a life of pretense because that's part of Satan's plan to attack you. He can hurt you when you are not what you're pretending to be. He can hurt you when you are not what you are pretending to be. So be real. Even if you ain't got it all together, be you. Okay. And God can help you in that area. So holiness is our defense. Holiness is not living right on the outside. So people can look at us and say, Oh, you live saved because you don't do certain things. I'm not talking Talking about doing works because we are not saved by our works. You know what I'm saying? We are saved by what we believe. Yeah, Abraham believed God and God accounted that unto him as righteousness. So righteousness is not what you do, it's what you believe. You have to believe that God has already accomplished all things for you. And so when you live upright before God, how are you doing that? You're saying, God, this is all I have to give to you and I have nothing else. And so what he says is he said he can take that and he can make it right. He can take it and make it right. So holiness is a defense. Fasting is the second measure that we're going to go with. And fasting is, um, you know, some people have sicknesses. So if you are sick and you can't fast, my advice to you, because you need to learn how to shut down your flesh, go get you some kale, go get you some spinach, go get you some um, avocado, just some of the things that I use, and um, some... Um, some avocados or uh, whatever you need, greens, all right? Put you some apple juice inside of there and blend it all together with some ice and, and you use that as a meal um, replacement because the Bible said that he hungered when he came out of the um, out of, off of the 40 day fast. Never said that he thirsted. Didn't say that he thirsted, said that he hungered. Okay, so what you wanna do is so if you have health issues, Get you those greens and that right now, I'm telling you, that's going to make you look beautiful because you're going to be getting to get the nutrients that your body need. And at the same time, you're shedding it down. You're not giving it all those meats with all the chemicals and the toxicities in it. You're not giving it everything that it wants. So because the um, flesh is used to putting some in its mouth, when you just give it that little nutrient, if you cannot do it completely, then your body still feel deprived. So you're still fasting, but you have to shed it down. You have to shed it down. So what you're doing when you fast, you're moving away from the borders of the flesh. I showed you that picture, the borders of the flesh. You understand? This is our vertical. This is our spirit man. Well, when we come into the world, the, the school system take your eyes and it, and it makes you a student of the world. And they call you a pupil. They call you a pupil in your classroom, okay? And so your pupil is the entry point. It is the womb in which they enter in order to draw you out through abstract knowledge. Because what's happening, you're moving through a line of knowledge into somebody else's thinking patterns and you're moving away from the boundaries of your center which is where God dwell he is the origin of our creation and when we are drawn away from ourselves then we are lost out there it's scary out there when you are not connected to you okay so when you go into a church and you're trying to find out who God is many of these people have not found out who they are and they hide behind the word and when they are challenged because you might gain more growth than them because you're diligent might be a little bit greater because the Bible says he that diligently seek him shall find him. And if you become more diligent than the leader, 
you can surpass the leader in what you sit up under. I know it's crazy. I've seen it. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> All right. So you have to understand. God bless you, Prophet Julius. God bless you. Thank you, man of God, for um, joining us. I just want to say that you can move away from the boundaries of the flesh. Now, in the flesh, this is where Satan pulled us out to. Why? Because he know that if he hits us in our brain mass, he hits us in our nervous system. This is where people have heart attacks. This is where people are most affected because they live out of the sensuality of who they are. Now, in the beginning of time, the Bible says that Adam fell, him and Eve, from God. That means the image of God was no longer reflected into the soul of man because the soul of man was turned away from God towards the tree of knowledge and the tree of knowledge became the dictator to the soul. It became the dictator to the soul. And so now the soul is living out of knowledge and it uses the sensory to make it feel as if what it senses, what it feels is a reality, but that is not a reality. That is your sensory. Sensory is illusionary. It is, <laughs> it is not real. Okay. But what's real is what's inside of us. So we have to move away from the borders of the flesh. And when we move away from the borders of the flesh, it doesn't matter who comes after us. They cannot hurt us because we're moving inward towards the kingdom. I always used to say, you guys, you want to beat up on somebody? Well, come on into the kingdom. Come, that's where you're going to get your head chopped off because God is inside of us. Whether we are connected to him or not, He's inside of us waiting to be redeemed, waiting to be restored back to his rightful place in eternity. See, when we are disconnected from him, I know it's awesome. He lives in us. We breathe in, in and out every day. That is the signature that he is there because in man, God breathed and man became a living soul. He became a living soul, but Jesus made him a quickening spirit, a quickening spirit. So we moving away from the soulish realm into the spiritual Orgy. How do we get there? Fasting. You have to fast. Pure heart. I don't care if you don't have it all together. But if you have a mind to do right, God can clean you up. But don't come as a hypocrite. And don't try to be something in front of other people. Because those that are in the spiritual plane, they know whether or not you are where you're pretending to be. And that's what they use to hurt you. That's what they use to come against you. What you are pretending to be. And they know you don't have it. So you got to be real. This, this whole walk, we have to be real. Even if we are still struggling, let's be real with our struggles. Because this is where Satan cannot use anything against us. You understand what I'm I'm saying and so now you go on and and I told you to go to Psalms I mean the 91st chapter because he said that if we dwell in the secret place of the most high which is the kingdom of God okay under the shadow of the almighty I didn't say the shadow of death because when we live in our flesh the flesh is a reflection of something greater that we have no connection to which is our spirit man our spirit man is the glory of God that is waiting to be redeemed to his rightful place in this earth realm. God bless you. God bless you, sis. Hallelujah. And I just want to thank God for each and every one of you guys joining me on today. But come on, let's go back to Genesis. And let's 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 see that Genesis led us away from the origin of our reality, which is God Almighty. Because if we lose the origin of God, we lost it when we left it, okay? Because when you go to school, they draw you out through a line of knowledge and you live out of the knowledge of other men and you have no you. Okay, so that's scary. I'm telling you, it's scary. That's where fear comes from. And that's why I put that picture on my page that they shrunk us inwardly, you know, so we would have nothing to go by but the outward. And that right there told us that this is all there is. No, this is not all there is. There's more to you than meet the eye. And there's a great part of you. But I got to say something to you guys. You cannot possess power until you lay the flesh on the altar. And this is the reason that we must die to our flesh. Because power in the wrong hand is dangerous. Come on, look at the people that are already in authority and they have not laid down their flesh. They have power over other people's lives and they are dangerous. They're dangerous, okay? So you have to lay down that flesh in order to obtain power because power cannot be placed in the hand of those that are not disciplined, those that don't have the root of love on the inside of them because when you have the root of love, you're not going to use your power to hurt anyone. You're not going to use your power to do any wrong. Look, people that have power, 
they have to have the root of love, okay? Now, those that have false power because they, this is what I believe. When I first got saved and I joined the church, it was like joining a gang. You know, everybody believed the same thing. They're all joining in together. If you come against one person, you come against all. It's like joining a gang. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? But when you enter into the kingdom of God, you realize that you don't need the fleshly support. You got heavenly support backing you okay don't be afraid of the enemy and the arrows that fly by night okay now listen he said that we got our body under the under the heading or the shadow of the almighty his shadow alone will protect us i will say unto the lord he is my refuge he, he is our refuge and we are not we are not refugees but he's still our refuge and he is our hiding place and so we have to hide in him but you got to try to live up right before him now if you love god i'm challenging you to live right live right i'm telling you you're losing out on the benefits when you don't live right i told people that i went to the lord i want so many people to the lord and i tell them when you come in asking for everything when you first get saved i used them yes i did <laughs> i said when you first get saved and you're a baby in the lord and you come all the way in you might not be able to get it right but you're coming all the way in ask god for something he's gonna give it to you because he wants you to first know that he is god and that he is your father and he answers prayer and once you have that confidence in him then we are challenged from faith to faith and from glory to glory hallelujah god bless you brother Herbert, you know, God bless you. And so he said that we have to go into the hiding place, the hiding place. But God didn't just give me that. He took me to Ezekiel, not to Ezekiel, to Ephesians. And the reason why we need to go to Ephesians, because that's where it's all happening. That's where we have to put on the armor. And that's where we have to realize that we are restricted to the elements of this world as long as we live in our flesh. We have been restricted to the elements of this world. It's started when you became a pupil, okay? When you became a pupil in school, you became a pupil, all right? And you became restricted to the things that you see in this world. And this is what you believe. You believe that you are limited to the things that you see in this world, but you, you're not limited to the thing that you see in this world. You're greater on the inside. You know, I read something a long time ago that said that if they knew who they were, then nothing would be able to stop them from moving forward. Well, this is the job of every church leader. Not trying to get on leaders, because I told you guys, I love the leaders. I do love them. I've never left a church and had and couldn't go back where they embrace me because I don't start trouble in churches. I'm not a gossiper. I don't talk about people. I'm, I'm saved for real. And when you say for real, you don't get involved in that kind of crap. But at the same time, I knew that I was in a church that did not support what God had called me to be. And when I tried to move into what God called me to be, being in a church that didn't believe in women preachers, then I came up under the blows of adversity. Yeah, but you know, God would allow you to go through that so the leader can find out that you belong to him, that you belong to him, that no matter how much they hit you, no matter how much they come against you, you belong to him. And that's what make them say, okay, maybe I need to leave them alone <laughs> because they're not going down all right but if you're being a hypocrite if you're not walking completely upright before God they can take you out of here they took my friend out of here and she loved God I just want you to know that she loved them she loved them she had backslid but she loved them you understand and they took they used her disadvantage to take her out of here and so you gotta walk upright before God and when you're not completely right ask them to cover you until you get right but don't pretend to be something that you're not because Satan he works with the hypocrisy he works with the things that we pretend to be, but we do not possess. So you got to be real. I don't care if you ain't got it all together. Just be real. God can get you together. Okay. That's what he told me a long time ago. He said, gay, look, I just need you to be real. Have a pure heart. It can be purely ugly, but I can clean it up and make it good. So just be pure. Oh, help me, Lord Jesus. So, you know, you don't have to be a fake. You don't have to be a phony. And, you know, when you first get saved, when you come into the church room, they teach you how to be a phony. They teach you, you know, because we had to dress right. We had to look right on the outside. You know, um, wear the long dresses because I didn't wear pants at first. And um, you didn't wear makeup. Well, I didn't care about that no way. But I'm just saying we had to look right on the outside. But I was still violent inside. I was still dealing with all of these social issues. I was still dealing with all of these mental instability, emotional instabilities. Yeah, because when we come from the world, we have to deal with the 
the, you know, the, the emotional breakdown of the soul. The soul has been through something when it hadn't had God. So when you come into church, the first thing that it got to heal is the soul. So when we come into the church and they teach us how to look right on the outside and the soul has had no guidance, the soul has had no instruction, the soul has not been healed, the soul has not been dealt with, then look, people are hiding. They're hiding all of these issues in the soul. And that's why you see some of the craziest people people in church. Yes, you do. Craziest people are in the church house. All right. And it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing to the kingdom of God. And so we have to reveal who we truly are before him. Well, you, you might as well, because he can, he can see you anyway. <laughs> you can't fake with him. And why fake for people that are not more important than him? They're not, they're not more important than him. And because when you do that, the leader can see because they have been given, they have been given a certain level, um, um, in a certain altitude, like Baal, you remember he went up to the mountain and he can see from every angle of the people. So the leaders can see from every angle. And when you are not what you pretend to be, they can see it. And they they can hear they, they, because they have been given certain insight over the flock. And so if you are not real and then you begin to speak against stuff that you don't like and that's what kids do, you know, when you are first coming into the Lord, you are like a kid and that's what kids do. They will come after you. They will attack you because they are trying to protect their own agenda. Well, you know, we ain't going over there no more. So Psalms 91 say that if we get in him, we, we have a hiding place. But then Psalms 37 say that don't worry about the wicked. Don't, don't you worry about your enemy. Fret not yourself because of evildoers and those that come to try to bring your demise. The Bible say that they can spread their leaves like a green bay tree. But then when you turn around, girl, they, uh, boy, they're not going to be anymore because God's going to cut them down. He's going to cut them short because the wicked will not prevail. Say that with me. Write it down. The wicked will not prevail. It will. They will not prevail because God has already conquered all that shall be conquered. And we have to move into the place of victory that God has already won for us. There is a place called victory that God has already won for us. You know, the Lord told me a long time ago, Gay, you don't have to fight a battle that has already been won. And I realized then that the battle that I fought was not with Satan because Satan is defeated. But the battle that I was fighting was with people that did not want me to move forward. They wanted to control my life. And so I had to prevail beyond these people. I had to prevail beyond these misguided leaders. I had to prevail beyond it. And so do you. You have to prevail. You have to because God has something on the inside of you. And Satan set up these kingdoms. I drew a picture one day, you guys, and God showed me a pyramid. And inside the pyramid, the pyramid was cut off like the one that you see on your money. And, and, and it had the Illuminati figure behind the eye. And that's the light of, of, of the of the knowledge of the tree. Okay. And, and it was and it was peering in, but we were cut off and the people were bound in the tomb. Okay. Okay. Now God showed me that. And inside this pyramid, it was every religion that you can think of. Every religion. It was a denominational maze. And everybody that were born into this world, they went through one of those religions. I don't care what the religion was, they went through one of those religions in order for them to try to find and seek out God. And they always ended at a dead end. Okay. And God showed me that all these religions were in one thing because it wasn't not, it was not about the kingdom. It wasn't about the kingdom. It wasn't about the kingdom. It was about denomination. Now you break that word down. That's a denominator. That's money. It became a financial situation. The Roman Catholic church, you know, a lot of people don't like to talk about this because they think that you're putting down Christianity. I'm not putting down Christianity, even though that was not the message of Jesus Christ. His message was the kingdom of God. You know, he didn't tell us to be Christ like he told us to be born of the spirit and to enter into his kingdom. And so when we enter into his kingdom, this is where all power dwell. But when Rome came in and they came into place, they put something in place to give us moral structures. They gave us moral structure so we can learn how to act and behave the wrongs and the right but they didn't give you no power because if you get power then you'll be able to overcome your flesh and you'll be able to overcome the world and you'll be able to walk in the dominion that God has designed us to walk in and so we have to move away from the borders of the flesh in order to obtain the thing that God has designed for us to have so let's go to a, um, this real good scripture I love Ephesians I don't know if you guys um, love Ephesians I love Ephesians because it really gives you a lot of information on what you're supposed to be doing. Ephesians, Ephesians. And I was, I was looking at, um, 
Ephesians, the second chapter, I do believe. And when I was looking at this, it was saying that in you have and you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses of your sin. So sin causes us to live a life of death, you know, and I know people say you ain't never going to stop sinning. Not as long as you live in your flesh. <laughs> so you have to deny your flesh in order for you to be, it's the, we going it's the second chapter on um, baby Ephesians, the second chapter. And I did the first verse. Hallelujah. And so you got to move out of your flesh in order for you to become victorious because the victory is already won when you are not walking in accordance to your flesh and if you're in your flesh trying to look trying to prevail you're in your flesh trying to do a spiritual assignment you're in trouble you're in trouble and I'm telling you leadership is only good when they let you know baby you're going the wrong way and I'm not gonna stop you but I'm gonna help you because they're there to help you they're, because when the call become very passionate you can't help yourself and because you, you got something calling you on the inside that is gonna overpower you eventually it's going to overpower you eventually God bless you brother Paul it is so good to see you love you my friend hallelujah and so he went on to say that um, in time past we were trespassing in our sin because we kept going Going over the boundary, going over the boundary. We're in time past. We walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. And look at this. He's so reduced that he only has power over the air. And that's why he's taking over the airways. That's why he is fighting us in the airways. That's why he's messing with atmospheres. That's why he's doing all of this stuff because he is the prince of the air. But we're not supposed to be living in the air. We're supposed to live on the inside. We come from the inside. We come from the inside. So when we move inward, then the outward is dominated by the inward kingdom and the inward kingdom is connected to outer space. I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you, show you how that is connected one day. Okay. I'm going to show you how it's connected one day. And he said, and now work of in the children. Okay. Let me go back. I'm going too fast. Slow down. Okay. Slow down. Power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedient. So now you, let me tell you what happened in the garden. When they fell from the image of God, when, they, when the soul turned away from God and the, and the reflection of God could no longer reflect into the soul of man and the tree became the dictator to the soul, then they failed. They failed to the sensory. And when they fell to the sensory, the breath out here became the breath in here. You know, and so they begin to, yeah, because they didn't get there. They, they didn't live off the air. The Bible say that God breathed into man and man became a living soul. So it was the breath of God that was breathed into man and man became a living soul. But when man fell, he was turned away from God towards the world and the world became his, um, his sustainer. So therefore we live off of the very trees that we fell to. Isn't that crazy? And the trees live off of us. You understand? So now knowledge has become the dictator to the soul. Oh yeah. Knowledge has become the dictator to the soul. You have no connection to the substance that's on the inside of you. You have no connection to the spirit of God that is on the inside of you. The only thing left of him is a vibration. And that's why people go into meditation. They go into yoga and they enter in some other way. But the Bible says in St. John, the 10th chapter, if you come up any other way, you are a thief and a robber because you came through the back door. You must come through the sheepfold in order for you to enter into the kingdom of God. You got to come through the sheepfold because it's when you come through that sheepfold, you are led to the slaughter like we all are. The Bible said we are like lambs led to the slaughter. You may be the lamb for your house. I know I was a lamb for my house, but we are led to the slaughter that we might be a sacrifice for many. Okay. So when we come through the sheepfold, that door that Jesus came through, we got to come through the sheepfold. We can't come through Buddhism. We can't come through Hinduism. We can't come through Zen. These are other doorways that people are coming through to get into the spiritual plane. And that's why we got so many renegade spirits going on now. We got renegade spirits. We got beast out there. And people try to say that it didn't mean beast when, <laughs> when I said something about beast. It's beast because Jude said they were brute beast. Okay. They were brute beast. So it's beast that we are contending with because when you're spirit man comes up under the nature of the flesh. The flesh cannot handle the spirit and it becomes bestiality. Yes, it does. It doesn't know boundaries because the spirit is eternal. And so the spirit will go beyond boundary because it is, it is an eternal being. So what did um, Paul said? He said that this 
air still working in the children of disobedient. It is working in the children of disobedient. Those that live according to the elements of this world, among whom also we all had our conversations with. Yes, you know, we did. And times past in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature, the children of wrath and anger, even as other, but God who is rich in mercy. I love him. Do you love him on today? He is rich in mercy. And that's why I love that chapter Psalms 85 and 10 mercy and truth met each other because it took God's mercy to keep us. But when that mercy met up with truth, the Bible say that they kissed each other. They embraced each other and righteousness and peace. They, and they kissed each other. You understand? So you know what I'm talking about? Righteousness and peace. Why? Because when you become righteous, when you become in right standing with God, then you become at peace, not only with God, but with yourself. So righteousness is not what you do in a church house. It is not how you can do works to make yourself look right before men, but righteousness is to be what God called you to be before the foundation of the world. You got to become what God called you to be before the foundation of the world. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Thoughts of good and not either evil. So God thoughts for you is to be upright concerning your creation. And when you become what God has created you to be, when you become what God has designed for you to be, then you are walking in righteousness. <laughs> You're walking in righteousness. That's why you got to believe God because the Bible say that God accounted what righteousness to Abraham because he believed him, because he believed him, because he believed him. It's not about our works. So you can work all day in a church and still go to hell. You can work all day and all night for years and still go to hell. Some of the meanest people you ever want to meet is in church. Why? Because they are not fulfilling their design. They are fulfilling something called flesh. I want to be accepted by those that they think are above them. You know, no one should be above us anyway, because the Bible says that we are here to esteem one another higher than ourselves. So it, look, I don't care how great people may perceive you. I don't care how great somebody may perceive me. The Bible says, let the greatest among you be your servant. We are here to serve. We are here to serve. And when he said, let, look, he that sitteth at me, it means that you don't have no food. So you cannot serve anybody anything to eat. But you that have food, you are a servant. You are there to serve the people. That's what real leadership is. It's all about servitude. You know, I'm going to tell you, last night, man, that was a hard night. Last night was hard, y'all. People coming all in and out of the atmosphere. And I'm going to tell you something. When you become sensitive, because what fasting does, it opens up the sensory. So if you're not ready for this, it opens up the sensory um, to um, the, 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 the um, earth realm, okay? So you're able to sense everything that's around you. You know, you can smell people, you know. You know when somebody enters into your presence. Fasting makes you sensitive. That's why Paul instructed us that we have to exercise our senses, you know, so we'll be able to determine what is right and what is wrong. And so, you know, when you begin to fast, um, after you get that word in you, the Bible say that, you know, we have to separate the soul from the spirit. That's what the word does is separates the soul from the spirit because the soul has been matted to the flesh and the spirit has been matted to the soul. And now the spirit think that what is going on in the soul is it's reality, but it's not. So God separates the soul from the spirit as under. And when he does that, then this is when we have to do the purging. This is when we have, and it, and it can become confusion if, confusing if ain't nobody teaching you your, your transition in the church. They're supposed to be teaching you your transition so you don't become scared. You don't become confused. A lot of people have went crazy because they didn't know what was happening to them because they didn't have teachers in the house. But you have to be taught when you're going through the transition. You want to be taught which way to go how to go, what's happening, and that way you know you ain't crazy because a whole lot of people have already been that way. But the people that don't want to tell you that way is the people that want to benefit from you being lost. Look, we are here to save the lost. God bless you, Sister Bridget. We are here to save the lost. We are not here. We're Jesus said, I'm sending you to the lost house. Look, if people are lost, then they're looking for you to show them the way. And if you're not showing them the way and you're just trying to make them feel good because you're keeping them 
in the outer courts. The outer courts is the flesh. That's the outer courts. That's a courtroom, but it's the outer courts. It's where judgment is always taking place because you're in a courtroom no matter what. So you're in the outer courts. But when you enter into the inner courts, we're going to come in with praise. That's what he said. We're coming in with praise. We're going to come into the inner court with praise. And in that place, a purging should take place because that's where the bread is. That's where we're washing on because you're washing yourself on the outside. But when you come on the inside, you're coming in and you're going to get the show bread. I'm going to have to do that one day. I'm going to have to do the testament that's in Hebrew, the Hebrew, um, the book of Hebrew, because it shows you the um, testament of the old and then the testament of the new, because you have to come in from the outside. You have to come in because you are open to every brute beast and the brute beasts are not just in the church. You guys, the brute beasts are also, um, in other religions. Okay. Because preacher, I'm hoping you could still see me being tied into that preacher. And so you know that they're not there to tie you to themselves. They're there to instruct you into the kingdom. So look, I broke every soul tie that I had ever made with any preacher because I don't want nobody having that kind of legal control over my life because they can speak curses on you. The Lord showed me that when someone has control of your, you, you join that church, right? And you make covenant with that church. Well, you're saying to that leader that he has the right to speak whatever he want to speak because now you're in his covenant. You're in his control. He is now your oversight. So if you make him angry, he can speak against you. You know what I mean? So no, you, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us for giving our soul to a man. God, take our souls out of the custody of a man and put our soul in you. And God, teach us where to go, how to go, who to sit up under, who to connect to. That we might become the people that we are designed to be. We have churches on every corner. We Satan has set up so many churches. We have churches on every corner. And so you know that these are the gates of hell. Because we don't need that many churches. And with all of the churches that we have on every corner, on every street, people are still unsaved. Is there no bomb in Gilead? You understand? Is there no explosion taking place in the land? Where is the power of the Holy Spirit in all of these churches that have been established? What's going on? What's going on? Hallelujah. But Paul said that we are no longer a part of the prince of the air. We are no longer a part of the prince of the air. We are no longer moving by the lust of the flesh. How do we stop it? Because we are now fasting. We're moving inward, away from the borders of the flesh. We're getting out of the outer courts. We're going into the inner court where the, where the showbread is, where all of the tools that we need to get into the holies of holies are there. And you know no one has entered into the holies of holies because if they had, all the garbage that they're doing in these churches, they would have dropped dead and we would have had to pull them out with a chain. So nobody has entered into the holies of holy because they are not willing to make the sacrifice. These churches, they are eating. They're eating off of the sheep. <laughs> you know, I went to one church, you know, I've been studying for years had a problem with standing before people. So I gave my stuff to the leaders. I didn't care if they preached it. They needed food. The sheep was hungry. Preach it. Do what you got to do. Give these people something to eat. I don't have to be seen. The fact remains is that people are hungry and they need to grow and they need to develop. And if you don't have the goods and you're in the in the position, because Satan put people in position that are unqualified. Why? Because he has the power over them then. He put people in position that does not have the goods to bring deliverance. Yeah. So he can have all the power. He ain't going to give nobody that's truly going into the kingdom access into his world. I was, I gave this pastor a picture that God had given to me. I drew it and, and I gave him this picture. And when I gave it to him, he said, you think the devil going to let you bring that up in here? And I said to this pastor and he had about 600 members. I said, are you telling me that this church belonged to the devil? He said, no, I'm just saying that the devil ain't going to let, you know, you bring that up in. I'm, what are you saying? So to me, he was letting me know that he understood that he was working for the devil <laughs> and that whatever truth I had, they weren't going to let it into the church house because the people belong to them. And that's what they say. These are my people. No, the people belong to God. They belong to the Lord. And your job is to lead them back to their creator, to lead them to their heavenly father who will love them 
them unconditionally. He will not use them because his ways is not the way of man. He loves beyond the love of a regular father. He loves us beyond ourselves. And this is what we must understand that God is trying to get us to go inward, inward away from the boundaries of the flesh. Where when they come to hit us, when they come to rustle us, when they come to hurt us, we can't feel it. <laughs> I know. I run in all the time. I run in all the time. And witches are everywhere. And you can't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of the enemy because the wicked will never win. The Bible say that he see the wicked. He see them and he laughing at them. He say he see them and he laughing at them. So don't you be afraid of the wicked. You understand? Because the wicked got their time. Their time is coming. It's coming. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So when you go on, it says that among who's also, among who I'm still in. Ephesians, you guys, among whom also we all had our conversation. I did that part, right? Okay. Where by nature, the children of wrath and anger, because you know, everybody mad, everybody mad. You mad when you're bound. <laughs> you mad when you're bound. Okay. All right. But when you have no meaning, then you become angry. You know, you try to find meaning, but you have no meaning because you have not connected to that eternal bloodline, that eternal line on the inside of you. So when you have no meaning, take that ING away. You become mean. Yeah. You become mean because you have no meaning. You understand? So we are supposed to be instructed into the body of Jesus Christ, into the body. I'm talking about his body. Okay. Where we become a part of his limbs, you know, and he's the head of the church. And when we become all a part of his body and we surrender this flesh on the altar, then we become one flesh. That's, that's the mystery of the, of the bride and the became one. They became one flesh because they laid it on the altar and Christ became the delegator. He became the, the delegator of all that was happening in his members. He was able to rise up and he's going to win because he won before he got here. We're going to win because we won before we got here. Don't you be afraid by, for, um, because of the enemy. Don't you fret yourself because of evildoers. Don't you get angry at the ones that are doing wrong because they are instruments in the hand of of the Lord. They are instruments. Satan is God's employer. That's who he is. He's working for God. He can do no more than what God allows him to do. But most of the time he's in Europe somewhere. <laughs> Uh, most of the time when you get an attack, it's because of ignorant people that don't have insight. Okay. So let's go. But God who is rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sin, have quickened quicken. That's what Jesus, Jesus became a quickening spirit. Man was a living soul, but Jesus became a quickening spirit. Now remember, he separated the spirit from the soul that's under. So Jesus became a quickening spirit. Okay? According to 1 Corinthians the 15th chapter. But Adam was a living soul. Jesus was a quickening spirit. I want you to get that. Adam was a living soul. Soul, intellect, emotion, will, but Jesus was a quickening spirit. It was all a setup, y'all. <laughs> it was a setup. Because the Bible say that he was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. That he was sacrificed. He was the lamb that was sacrificed before the foundation of the world. All that we are going through is all that has already happened. And when we can come to grips with this, you know, then we can understand that we are winners. And the only way that we are not winners or if we are hypocrites and we cannot go the way of the hypocrite because the hypocrite is all about satisfying their greed. They're all about satisfying their lust. They're all about satisfying the thing that will make them happy in this life. And God say that they have their reward. But for us that are called according to the kingdom and it is a beautiful kingdom and it's a kingdom of love that when you get it, you don't you can see me. When you're ready to go on your job, you have grace. You got a grace period. You got five minutes, maybe 10 minutes to get to your position before your time run out. Well, grace is strength. It is the strength to get you to where you got to go before your time run out. Grace strengthens you to do in the spirit what you are unable to do in your flesh. Grace gives you the power to overcome the nature of your flesh. So grace is a strength that strengthens 
time until you get in your place, okay? So grace gives us the strength in the spirit to do what we could not accomplish in the flesh. So it is not one of those plans that tell you that you can go do whatever you want to do, but God's grace is with you. You know, God's grace is the strength. You understand that? He said, my, my grace is, is, is strength. It's strength. It gives you power in weakness. It gives you power in weakness. So you got to understand that grace empowers you to do in the spirit what you could not do in your flesh. This is what God has come to do with his grace and have raised us up together and made us set in the heavenly places in Christ. Yahshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ. Look, are we in the heavenly places? Mm Mm-mm. We're not in the heavenly places. We're in the earth realm. (laughs) And that's why we are suffering. People are bleeding inside because no one is leading them in. No one is leading them into the heavenly places. We are supposed to be taking dominion. And if we put our flesh on the altar, then the power that is rightfully ours, that we might take dominion in this earth will be given to us because we are supposed to take dominion in this world. But power, again, I will say, will not be placed into the hands of someone that is not disciplined, someone that does not have the core of love, the core of love, because love, you you know, can be trusted with power because you can have power and still won't hurt your enemy. You can have power and you still won't try to kill your enemy. Now I'm going to tell you something. When witches come at me and witches violate me and come against me the wrong way, the first thing I see is the scripture subject of witch not to live, subject them not to live because I hate witches in my space. I can't stand witches in my, they stink. Their spirit is stinky. You understand? And so when you fast, You're going to become open to a whole lot of things that's going on in the spiritual plane. And if you're a baby, then this is not for you. But you can't stay a baby forever. It took Jesus three years to train his disciples and get them out there and they changed the whole world. Okay? In three years, they were disciples and they went out and changed the world. Three years. You got people sitting in churches for 10, 15, 20 years. They still can't even pray a headache off nobody because they don't have no power and they're not connected to the power that live on the inside of them. That's sad. It's sad because we have the power to speak life. You know, when um, I did prayer today and um, kind of messed up a little bit because I was um, trying to read from a floor mat um, for curses or whatever, you guys. And, and I have I don't I know I don't have that much time. left. That's why I talk so fast. It's like when I was on the radio, I had to hurry up and get it out, you know, but um, I was trying to you know, pray a prayer that I had gotten off of the internet and I wanted to break curses over family. And you know, it's the power that's inside of you that causes the the, the, um, the prayer to be effective. And I found out many years ago, you know, when people come and ask me what I pray for them, even my kids, when they got trouble, you know, want to come and ask me to pray for them. <laughs> but that prayers are effective. I, I know that I can touch heaven. So I do have that kind of relationship where I can touch heaven. And it happens right away. You don't have to wait for days. I thank God for that. Well, that's the connection that you're supposed to have. You're supposed to have that kind of connection with God. That when you pray you see the answer to your prayer. You understand? You And you don't pray for yourself. You pray for others. What you sow in the ground for others will happen for you. We pray for others that they might be delivered. That they might be free because I used to pray for myself and he never answered my prayer and when I pray for other people he <laughs> he answered all of those prayers and so I know he heard me so that was the evidence that it was not meant for me to pray only for myself but to pray for others I don't think I prayed for myself too much in a very long time oh hallelujah so he went on to say that we have been set in heavenly places are we set in heavenly places no We're not set in heavenly places because we're not being taken in by those that are in authority. And they should be taking you in because you can help them. You can help them. And he said that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his greatness and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved. It is by the strength of grace that we have been made saved. It is by the strength of grace that we have been made saved. Okay? Okay? through faith. And so you got to believe it. You got to believe it for it to come to pass. You got to believe through the strength of grace that you have been made saved. And it is by the strength of grace that that has made us strong in our weakness that we have been made saved. Oh, hallelujah. God bless you, Prophetess Sharita. God bless you. Good to see you, baby. And 
And God said that we are safe. So the grace that they're talking about, that grace that they use to do whatever they want to do. You know, people use grace to do whatever they want. It's by the grace of God. It is by the grace of God. No, grace is given to you so you can be strengthened. He said, your grace has given me strength to do in my spirit what I could not accomplish in my flesh. So it is by the grace of God that we are saved. It is by the strength of God that we are saved. So it is through his strength. It is through his grace grace that we are able to do and move into the spiritual plane. So don't give up. Have faith in God. You know, I know that you've been taught a lie. The world has taught us that this is all there is, but it's not. Your pupil is your deceiver. Your pupil is the deceiver, you know, because the Bible say that the eyes are the window to the soul. And and, and, and the Bible say that the, that the light of man is in the eye. And if your eye be full of light, then your whole body is full of light. So why do you think they use that machinery to close up the vision? That's why I told you to take a look at that thing on my page, you know, and there are were blinded because Satan is so defeated that he only has technology. So imagine if you get into your spiritual, if you get in your spiritual place, you have already won over him because he was reduced to the natural realm by Jesus Christ. Yes, sure. He was reduced to the natural realm. And so in order for him to conquer us, he had to reduce us to the natural realm. But we got to come up, y'all. We got to come up. And the only way to come up is to go in, into the kingdom, away from the border of the flesh, where when they begin to plow on the outer man, we will not feel the force of their plow. We got to move inward to the core. It is a spiritual being inside of each of us waiting to manifest. The Bible say that the earth grown of in travail is groaning right now, travailing right now, waiting for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. And so we must go inward. We must go inward that the Lord will be manifested, that he will be manifested. And he ain't going to make nobody God over that because because he's the God of all creation. He's not going to make anybody God over you because he is the God of all creation. And the Bible say in the last day that they will be sitting in the temple proclaiming themselves to be God. They might not be saying that they're God, but they'll tell you, you mess with me, you're messing with God as if they are more greater than you are. But the only reason they are there is because of you. You know, the Bible told me that Moses came when the children of Israel began to cry out to the Lord. And when they cried out because of their hard taskmaster, then the Lord sent his deliverer, which was Moses. So they are there to bring deliverance, deliverance. But if you have not been to the mountaintop, then you cannot take the people where you have not been. And so it is up to us to seek him with our whole heart, to seek him until we find him, to knock on the door, the door of the flesh, until God opens it up and brings us into the spiritual covenant that we seek. We have to seek him. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? Oh, hallelujah, with our whole heart. And I don't care if you feel that you don't have it all together. That's the ones he wants because he's going to make it right. <laughs> you know, Peter was jacked up. He was ready to take some somebody's ear off. He did take somebody's ear off. He was ready to throw down. He was ready to do whatever he had to do to protect his master and his savior. Yes, he was. He didn't have the right behavior, but he had the right mindset. But God gave him access into the kingdom, the kingdom. And he didn't have to fight with those carnal weapons anymore because he realized that the weapons of his warfare was not carnal, but they were mighty through God, mighty through God to the pulling down of every stronghold that is holding us to a lie, holding us to things that are not true. It is mighty through God to the pulling down. Did you hear what I said? Every stronghold, we're pulling it down. Every imagination that has exalted itself. I don't care if it's an exalted preacher, if it's an exalted situation, if it's an exalted sickness, Pull it down because it's exalted above the mind of God. Because in him, there's no sickness. In him, no one can defeat. No one can bring you into a place of destruction in him because he is the great I am. There is no one greater than him. And I love him on today. Don't you love him? Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. So you got to move in. You got to move in. If you're called to ministry, you need to do it before you become engrossed with ministry. You got to do it. You know, I used to worry. I say, Lord, well, what about those people that are already out there and it look like that they're compromising, that they sold you out for the dollar? He said, well, they was in religion. They wasn't in my kingdom. <laughs> I said, wow. He said, they were in religion. They were not in my kingdom. They never made it into my kingdom because those that 
come into the kingdom cannot backslide. I want you to research it, and then when I come back up here, you're gonna you're gonna put it on the um, tablet here. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna show me where is it in the Bible where anybody ever backslid except for Ananias and Sapphira in the New Testament, and they died at the scene of the crime. They gave up the ghost because you cannot sin against God when He is inside of you. Or the Bible say it's like crucifying to yourself Christ afresh. It is blasphemy. You understand? And the Bible say in that place you cannot be redeemed. You cannot repent. That's why Judas searched for repentance and he could not find it because that's a place you can't backslide. It's over. It's over. So they, they entered into religion. They did not enter into the kingdom. So they can come. They can come. They are still allowed to surrender the lie and come into the truth. Those leaders, they have entered into religion, but they never entered into the kingdom. So I realized that there is hope for them, but many of them are going to choose the Baal worship. They're going to choose being Lord over God's people. That's unfortunate. They're going to choose to satisfy the nature and the lust of their flesh. They're going to choose it, but there are those that want God. They love God. They want to do right by God. They want to lead God's people in, but don't have the tools, don't have the ability. Well, God said that he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to make the choice to do it the right way. He's waiting for you. You that have been called to leadership. You that are an apostle, a pastor, a preacher. He's waiting for you because he has the tools. He's going to give it to you. You're going to be able to lead the people into the truth. All you got to do is be willing to abandon the lie. You got to abandon the lie in order to enter into the truth. If you're not willing to abandon the lie, you can't mix it together. He said he ain't putting no new wine in no old bottles. He ain't putting nothing new in something old. You got to get rid of the bottle. You got to get rid of the skin and you got to start from the foundation. So you got to be willing to do it from the beginning. You got to be willing to overturn what ain't right. You got to be willing to count it all that's done. And he say that he'll bring you into the kingdom. I'm talking to you. You apostle, your leader, your pastor. I'm talking to you. There's an opportunity for you to come in. If you went the wrong way, if you still sold God out for the money, it says that you did not come into the kingdom. You was in religion. You didn't come into the kingdom, but you can still get into the kingdom if you don't want to perish you can get come on come on in you can get in because in that place you cannot backslide there's no backsliding in that place i remember a long time ago i told my mother i said mom People going, the, all the hell I was going through, I said, he think I'm going to leave God. I would never leave him. She said, no, nah, baby. And she wasn't in church yet. She said, you too far in for that. <laughs> so you can get so far in that there's no backsliding. You can get that far in. You know, I'm not talking about religion because people can be born and raised in religion and they don't backslide out of the church, but they're having sex in the church. They're, they're, they're having, you know, they're getting high in the church. They're doing everything in the church. So that, that's not backsliding. Sliding. You just never was saved. <laughs> and you're in church. You're in a physical building. But I'm talking about coming into the kingdom of God. In that place, that's a beautiful place. I'm telling you, you ain't going to want to get hot no more. You ain't going to want to have sex no more unless it's in covenant with God. You're going to be so fulfilled in him that in, in anybody come your way that ain't got what you got, you're going to kick them to the curb because you ain't got time to be dealing with dust. People that don't want to give up their flesh. You ain't going to have time for it. God bless you. God bless you, serenity. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. So Ephesians, Ephesians, the second chapter say that he will set us in the heavenly places, the heavenly places. We have to go into the heavenly places, but are we there yet? No. As that guy said, or, you know, the move, are we there yet? No, because People have not entered into that domain. And for you leaders that want to enter into that, enter into that domain, you can enter in by fasting and prayer. You can enter, and you know, and some of them, they don't realize that they are operating in the realm of the psychic world. <laughs> Why? Because in the psychic world, you're limited to the natural realm. You're limited to the natural realm. You can tell me what's going on in the natural, but pull me something out of the spiritual and tell me something that's going on in the spiritual planes of God. That's what you want to know. I'm not talking about the natural because Nature is connected to nature, okay? Nature is connected to nature. We're talking about something that is talking about spiritual. And people say, well, you know they're a false prophet if it don't come to pass. Do you know that Isaiah talked about Jesus before he got here? Isaiah talked about Jesus and died and went on and it up. She prophesied to me. She told me things that happened to leave her because we were friends since nine years old. But that girl feeding riches of his grace and to believe in him. And when we believe in him, he empowers us to believe in the impossible. We have to believe in him. And when we believe in him, he empowers us 
by grace to believe the impossible. Okay. So it's not even from ourselves. So we can't take any credit. And so people that walk in pride and people that walk in arrogance, they're religious. They're not in the kingdom. Don't get mad at them. They don't have the real deal because when you have the real deal, there's such a humility that comes with that because you understand that all belongs to God and nothing belongs to you. You understand that he is your every thought, your every being, and you can take credit for nothing because all credit belongs to him. You understand these things. It's freezing up. I know. I know. God bless you, Sister Katrina. God bless you. Yeah, but you know, you understand that nothing belongs to you. But when you have those that are arrogant and those that are prideful, it is because they are not in the kingdom. They have religion and they have all of the tools and the rituals that they feel will make them righteous. And it's working for them. So they think that they are doing the will of God. But Egos die in God. Egos no longer exist in God. Ego is a mere sense feeling. It's, it's, the, it's the senses. That's all the ego is. It's the senses that's based on knowledge. It's based on knowledge. So you got the tree of knowledge working with your feelings and it became an ego. You know, at first they called it id, but it became an ego. And then the alter ego is these people that's altering people. You understand what I'm saying? That's the alter ego. That's why you got to come into the kingdom. You got to go on the inside so you will not be manipulated by the forces that surround you. You got to go on the inside so you will not be manipulated by atmospheres. You right on the inside of you, you don't have to flex your muscle because you understand who he is in you. And so what you do, you, 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 you let your enemy know that God is your father and that he is the great I am and that you want to be careful about coming against me. That's what it's all about, being perfected in him. Now, I don't know if you can see me. I'm going to close this out, you guys. And the ninth and the 10th verse is we, for we are the workmanship created in Christ unto good works, okay, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. Okay, so he's already ordained everything. And so we got to move into what's already accomplished. Go to Hebrews, all right? Go to Hebrews and, and read the fourth chapter. The children of Israel could not enter into rest because they would not enter into what was already accomplished because they could not believe God. And it's very hard to believe in the Lord, Yahshua, you know, Yahweh. You, you can't believe in him if you don't have a relationship. And I didn't say go to church because many people go to church, but they have never went to God. So, you know, I'm, the church is there to teach you about the relationship that you have come to know. So, you know, if they have the information, because so many churches don't have the information to do that. But church is there for us to come together collectively to fellowship and to worship the God, the God that we all say that we love. But the true and genuine relationship is done in private. It is the intimacy that we have gained with him that brings us into this place called the kingdom, away from the borders of the flesh, where we can no longer be the punching bag for every stray spirit. You know, and all spirits are not coming from the church. They're coming from Indians. They're coming from, you know, <laughs> they're coming from um, Hinduism. They're coming from Buddhism. They're coming, it's all kind of people have entered out of the flesh illegally. And that's why he say, you don't want to come that way. You got to come through the sheepfold. And if you come through the sheepfold, you're going to be led like lamb to the slaughter. Because we have to die on the altar of sacrifice in order for us to receive the power that God has for us. God bless you, Pastor Rob. It's so good to see you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me, man of God. Um, so I'm going to close this up and I'll be back on Monday. And if you guys really want me to continue to teach, because this is where this is my zone. Yes, I am a preacher. And God has taught me how to do all of these things because he wants me to get the message out to his people. I said his people. Yeah. And so he has called me to do that. And so, and, and, and even with the pastors, he's going to bring them into the kingdom because the kingdom is the only way to go. Because if you don't get into the kingdom, then you are stranded on the outside. And that's where judgment takes place is in the outer courts. It's in the outer courts. We got to come in. We got to come all the way in. I love you guys. Thank you so much. And so you know how to get in. You got to go all the way in and you can escape the blows of your enemy. Go all the way in when you fast. And if you have illnesses, I told the um, people that were here before you guys came up, 
get you some um, kale, get you some spinach, make you some um, juices, get, start juicing, you know, with lime and all of these things and some apple juice. And and because the Bible say that he hungered when he came off his fast, never said that he thirsted and drank, you know, the nutrients that you need, but don't put anything in your mouth to eat and still the flesh feel deprived. Okay. It feels, that's how you can start until you wake, work your way up, you know, work your way up because I'm telling you, I can fast for months. I'm just letting you know because it's it's just the way I do because you know people are crazy and you want to go in go in go in you guys I love you I love you thank you for joining me see you on Monday God bless you have a wonderful weekend with your family and your friends bye bye